Well, good morning, YouTube, and welcome back to Everything RV with Dave. It's that time of the year. The time of the year that I really do not like because it's time to winterize the RV. As it gets colder, you really have to winterize your RV so that you don't uh, have pipes that freeze, uh, you know, and have issues, you know, with your water system inside the RV. There's a couple ways of doing this, and the the way most people do it is they put some liquid inside their uh, water lines, uh, and uh, it's an antifreeze type of a situation. I don't like that, and I don't like it for a couple reasons. Number one, why would I want to put anything but water inside my water lines? You know, something that I have to uh, flush out, make sure I get it all out. Uh, <laughs> A little background on me. In my earlier days, I spent almost nine years working for an engineering firm. And uh, we did water and sewer. On water lines, there is a natural process that after the water line is finished, and that could be five miles, 10 miles, whatever it is, you know, that you flush the water line and uh, add a mixture of chlorine and water and bring it, uh, you know, through the whole line wait 24 hours, uh, flush it, uh, take a sample, send it to a lab, check the bacteria. Because of that, I, I understand bacteria and water lines and about three or four times a year, I disinfect my water system. It's not that hard. So why would I ever wanna put something like an antifreeze in it? Even though it's supposedly for RVs, so I do mine a little bit different. I take a compressor and use compressed air and blow all the water out. Now, I know people are gonna say, well, that's not good enough, but I've been doing it now for four years and have had no problems whatsoever. And I live up north, you know, in and around the Pittsburgh area, it's awful cold. The only difference is, is when you're doing this, you must make sure that you get the water out of the water lines. It's that simple. So without further ado, let me let me get started here. Let me show you how I do this and hopefully it might help you. Uh, it's not that hard. You know, there's no reason for uh, a, a big expenditure. Uh, I do use a little bit of the uh, RV uh, water line treatment for the uh, drains. The first thing you need to do is you need to drain your hot water tank. Now, in my case, you know, I've got a uh, rod that is right here below the uh, where the burner is, and that will let all the water out. But I also have right over here in the corner, a switch that says on and off. Now I always turn that off. I turn that off when I'm doing this procedure because I don't want to invert, inadvertently have anybody, you know, for whatever reason, turn the hot water tank on. So this eliminates that possibility. If you have no water in the hot water tank and somebody turns it on, it's gonna burn out your element. So I go ahead and turn that off. Now let me go ahead and take the plug out and let this thing drain. So as you pull this plug out, you gotta be a little bit careful and start letting it drain. So I will be able to reuse this. Now that I've got it all cleaned out, uh, and you can see I took a little wire brush around the uh, threads there just to clean them up a little bit. Now, what I can't show you, is hard to show, is the back of this uh, unit. So every configuration on every trailer is a little bit different. Uh, on mine, I have to reach in underneath the sink, and it's, uh, it's a real crowded, dark area, and I will need to take two knife valves and turn them so that they're in line instead of going into the hot water tank. Here, I'll give you a little bit of a view of those knife valves. You can see that the red line is hot water. You know, in a straight line, can, uh, straight line, so that it's not gonna allow any 
water to go into the hot water tank. And the same thing with the one at the bottom. It's clear down there and it's in a straight line. So, so I have bypassed my water heater. Let me take a couple seconds here and ask you if you do like these videos, and I put a lot of time and effort into them. You know, go ahead and hit that uh, like, like button. Reach over there and hit that subscribe button. It sure helps me out. Now on my particular unit, I have this uh, filter system. I don't carry a filter in it. I use the filter on the water line. Uh, I need to take it off, empty the water out. Okay, I've drained that uh, container. And now let me show you what I've got here. Uh, I've got this little Harbor Freight. It's a small one, it's only three gallons, but it's fine. And I made this up. That's nothing but an air chuck, a little valve, and a plastic threaded fitting that will screw. That's a hose bib fitting. So this will connect right into my city water connection. So there you go, I've got it all connected up. Let's go ahead and open up this valve. And as you can see, it immediately started to uh, blow some of the water out. Now that we're inside, the furthest from the water supply is my sink. So I'm gonna start with the sink and I'm just gonna open up. You can do either one, I did the hot water first. And you can see that it is absolutely blowing the water out. As it gets to this point, I'll just go ahead and turn it off. I will do this three or four times to make sure that I get all the water out. Now, you want to get all the water out, but you're never going to get every droplet out. But I'm going to use my low point drains to drain them out later. And if there's a small amount of water, I've never had any issues. So let's do the cold water. Okay, before I go any further, let me show you that the uh, dial on the left shows me 100 PSI, but what I'm actually adding to the RV is about 40 to 42 PSI. You really don't want to have any greater than that. You really don't want to be putting a whole bunch of air pressure, just like you don't want a hell of a lot of water pressure. So let's go ahead and open up our valve. And let's go see what's going on on the inside. So there we have the hot water. There's the cold water. Compressor just turned on. Go back to the hot water. Go back to the cold water. Now let's let that set. Let's go into the bathroom. Let's take the uh, cold water. And as you can see, there's, there's not a whole bunch of water now. Let's take the hot water. Back to the cold water. Back to the hot water. Let's do the shower. Do the hot water. Now let me take the uh, hose off. Let me go back to the sink here. 
let me go to the commode. And the commode is really uh, one that you have to do. You have to get all the water out of the, uh, the valve in the back. If you don't, it'll freeze and it will, uh, you have to replace it. So, you know, it's hard to hear, but it's, it's letting some air through. And again, it, you know, 40 PSI, 30 PSI. I mean, all you need is, you need to have an amount of uh, air, little bit, little bit, repeat this pro process you know, four or five times I'll let the gen I'll let the uh, compressor go ahead and uh, power itself up get up to a hundred psi on the one side and 40 42 on the other side the big advantage of doing the winterization this way as far as I'm concerned is that if I want to leave in January or December or November I just hook up my RV and go uh, I can put water in it I don't have to flush anything I don't have to worry whether you know I get all the uh, uh, antifreeze out of the lines uh, in my opinion and again you have to know a little bit about what you're doing I believe this might be the best way to winterize your RV on the water system. Now that I've got an, a lot of the water out of the system, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my water pump. Now I'm running my water pump just for, you know, 20, 30 seconds, just to make sure that I get the water out of the water pump. I turn it off, let it sit for a minute, turn it back on. Turn it back off. That should do it. Now we're back to. I mean, there. That trace amount of water that's in that line is never going to give you any problem. No water at all. Power again. So when I get a little bit, I go ahead and let the, you know let the air build up, and I'll come back and do that again. Let's go over and do the toilet again. Okay, now that I've got uh, most of the water lines blown out, I've crawled underneath my RV, and those are my low point drains. The blue being the cold, and the uh, red being the uh, the hot. I'm going to go ahead and take those caps off and I'm going to let it go ahead and drain. And then after I drain it out, I'm going to uh, turn the air supply on again and make sure they get all the water out of those. It was kind of hard for me to uh, videotape that, but you can see the water that squirted out of them. Now on these caps on mine, do you see the little inserts? You, know, you must make sure that they're, they are there so that it will stop all the water, you know, because again, if the, if the low point drains do not have good caps on, you, know, you put water in your RV and it'll start leaking out. So let me go ahead and add some air. And as you can see, I'm getting a little bit of uh, water dripping out of there. Okay, now that I've put the, uh, the drain uh, caps back on, there's one more that you have to make sure that you get, and that is if you have an outside uh, faucet, or in this case, a sprayer, you know, you have to make sure that you get it cleared out. So, 
let's go ahead and blow it out. Now let me go turn the And that should be a good on that. Let's go ahead and do the hot. Now, on this, when I get to this point here, you know, I will take the nozzle off. I will take the nozzle off right here and just let it drip a little bit more. But I can do that a little bit later. On the water pump, you've got a screen there and a, and a bottle. I'm gonna go ahead and take it off, empty it out, and check the screen. It's just a little plastic with a screen in it. And I mean, it's fairly, it's clean. It's, there's nothing wrong with the screen. Get all the water out of it. Uh, I'm gonna clean up a little bit of the water that dripped out. And uh, I'm gonna put this back on. There you go. Gone ahead and, and put it back on. That was actually the hardest part of this whole uh, winterization. <laughs> I couldn't get the cap on. Now I'm going to go ahead and take uh, take my bottle off and empty out that little bit of water. Okay, I've got all the water out of it. Uh, I've got everything cleaned up. Let me go ahead and uh, run one more time inside. So let's let's do it one more time. I'm getting nothing out of the cold. I'm getting nothing out of the hot. Nothing out of the cold, nothing out of the hot, nothing. nothing, a little bit, not much. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a, two or three more times with the air, but there's no reason for me to show you, you know, that I'm just keep doing it. Uh, and I'm going to do it three or four times. But this is now when I need to use my RV and Marine. And again, the only reason why I use this is that I need to protect the traps. And, you know, this is not drinking water. This goes into the uh, gray tank. So I'm going to add in every one of the drains, some of the RV, This will protect the drains and the, the tank a little bit. I mean, I've emptied my tanks, but you know, the drains, I guess I could figure out a way. Let's put some of the black tank. Let's put a little bit more down. Because that does run into the gray tank. And I want to make sure that this uh, gets through the traps. Now, it's winterized as far as the water and the drains and the hot water tank. And it would be very easy to uh, get this thing on the road again if I ever decided that I wanted to take off. So I hope you enjoyed this little video and I hope it helps you out. Uh, if you want to try to uh, winterize your own RV, you know, using the air method, I think it works very well. You have to be diligent about what you're doing and make sure that you don't add too much air pressure and make sure that you go around and make sure that all the water is out of the, out of the lines. I'm checking it again. Uh, and uh, I do appreciate you watching this video. And I will see you on the next video.